For more than 20 years, Dr. Matilda Krem and Phil Wilson have been leaders in the fight against AIDS. In 1985, Dr. Krem founded the American Foundation for AIDS Research, and in 2000, she received the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Phil Wilson is the founder and CEO of the Black AIDS Institute. Let's hear what they have to say about the state of the AIDS epidemic. Hello, Dr. Krem. Hi, Phil. It's good to see you again. It seems like we have to stop meeting this way. You know? <laughs> we should not. That's right. We should meeting. not stop meeting this way. Right. Exactly. It's always interesting and constructive. You have literally dedicated your life uh, to fighting HIV and AIDS. And at what point did you realize that's what it was going to be? In the beginning, did you think that this was going to be it? or Really, in 83, when we became incorporated as a not-for-profit research organization, we had a pretty good idea that uh, we were far from seeing the global impact, but it was, could be expected. Now you could tell that it was going to be something big. The potential for really global epidemics is there with HIV. As you know, because I've said this before, that you're certainly one of my heroes, and, mm -hmm. um, and you're, quite frankly, an unlikely AIDS hero. I was very lucky not only to have been a biologist who could, you know, understand or see or study to observe certain things in a rational way, okay? Uh, secondly, that I was a woman. I was not a gay man, and I was nevertheless totally dedicated to this. And thirdly, that I was not a young girl. I was obviously a lady who was not talking in her self-personal interest. And the fact that I had a husband who was prominent in the entertainment industry, where he was respected, had many friends, and I could go from one to the other and ask for help. And of course, being able to put people on the air, or on screens, with famous names, and uh, the most famous of all those has been Elizabeth Taylor, right. who helped enormously just by being there. I would like to ask you a question about your work. Okay. What brought you to create the Black AIDS Institute? It's all a journey. You know, I got involved in HIV and AIDS in the very beginning in 1982. Um, and I found out that I was HIV positive around 1985, 84, 85. And um, turns out that I'd been infected in 1980. Uh, and so by uh, 19... 96, I actually had gotten very, very sick, and my yeah. doctors thought that I was going to die. And mm. so I stopped working. In fact, you know, the do my doctor had given me uh, less than two days to live. Oh, my God. Uh, it was really that bad. I was in an intensive care unit at Kaiser oh Permanente Hospital, and my mother came out. Um, so I stopped working just as the time that protease inhibitors and the new you know, regimens yeah. were kind of coming on the market. So I started on you know, those regimens, you know, and you know, I came out of that. And by 1999, I felt like, well, I should go back to work. And so we decided that we really had to get black communities engaged. So uh, we started the Black AIDS Institute in an effort uh, to mobilize you know, traditional black leaders and black media and black civil rights organizations uh, to kind of confront HIV. We've trained hundreds uh, of people in the science of HIV. One of the things that is really, really problematic in black communities is the low HIV science literacy. That's right. Uh, and that's an important part of, of what well, there we do. We go back to education. And the thing is that when people don't understand the science of HIV, they're less likely to protect themselves against the virus, of course. you know, uh, they're less likely to you know, access treatment. It's difficult for them to adhere to treatments. You now they're in no position to Im to impact policy. Knowledge is so important. important. Yes, people uh, uh, acquire self motivation by knowing. You know, then then education for safer sex makes sense. That's right. That's yeah. right. And I think one of the big mistakes our society has made is to be to make moralistic judgments about nat natural events. Right. Natural events should be looked with what we know about nature and a rational system uh, to analyze the events. Do you think that a national aid strategy is important? And what do you think it will take 
for us to develop a national aid strategy in this country. We used to have a federal council, right, an advisory council to the president on AIDS. And the first, uh, uh, they were called czars, remember? Mm, they right. were the aid czars. Well, one after the other kind of disappeared, and I understand the council disappeared also recently. So there goes the unit that right. was in charge of developing or maintaining a strategy in this country. We don't have it anymore. We have no excuse for not being able to develop one other than, you know, it requires political leadership. It requires political leadership. Uh, and also it requires a, a grassroots movement. Mm -hmm. I did a lot of lobbying in the early years of the epidemic, going from one office to the other on Capitol Hill, and also in the certain states, uh, visiting with the state governments. And <clears throat> I, what amazed me is that the people of the high place in government knew not more and sometimes less than the people at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Important new strategies must start at the grassroots level and, and trickle up. Now I think, give us what you, your vision or your sense of what the epidemic is today. Recently, the CDC released studies showing that the AIDS epidemic in the United States is 40% worse than previously believed. You know, previously we thought that we were having about 40,000 new oh, cases yeah, a year. New disease right, it's exactly. 50, yeah. Now it's 56,000 yeah. now new disease, and that's a huge increase. Yes. Now, 25% of HIV positive people in our country don't know that they're HIV positive. That means a conservative estimate would say 600,000 people are living living with HIV and they don't know that they're infected. 40% of the new cases among men are black. Uh, we see 70% of the new cases among adolescents and youth are black, you know. You see, a very important aspect of the disease and its control is to know where it is, who catches it, uh, how is it is, is transmitted, etc. And this we can know only if everybody gets tested. Right. And it's very important, even people who are unlikely to come down positive, they never know unless they are tested because there are no clinical symptoms to reveal infection. You've been at this for a long time, and, and yeah. do you think we might see a cure at some point? And, and what might that look like? Well, because I have a, a, a fundamental belief in science. I think, you know, it's only a matter of time, but we are going to get to understand this darn virus and know what it wants and what it needs and deprive it of it. And, um, and you know, there will be a vaccine. It's not going to be a vaccine based on knowledge of the immune, immune system as in the past, but there will be something. We're going to be able to block this virus. And uh, this is what makes me very hopeful. And in addition, people like you, you know, who, who work hard and are smart and know what goes on and do the right things. We tend also to speak uh, about um, data, about information on the epidemiology, you know, the spread of the disease and who gets in it, who doesn't. They're always l counting the bad situations. We count the people who are sick or who are this or that. We don't count because we can't count all the lives we have saved already. And the public should know that. There have been millions of people who have not become infected or have not died of, of AIDS because of what we have done in terms of prevention or treatment. That's right. And that should be, it is, in fact, very encouraging. Well, thank you very, very much, Mathilde. Thank you for being here.